So you've bitten the bullet, you're gonna start fly fishing. The first thing I always tell people to do when they start fly fishing is to find your local panfish or uh, bluegill, perch, the, you know, a fishery that has some small size fish that are really great quarry on the fly and to pick up a few bare basic essentials. Today we're gonna go through what I like to do with my first time clients so that I can show you, you know, the ins and outs of what you really need versus what you really don't. And also some basic things that might not suit the intermediate or advanced anglers, but anybody just starting out, you know, this is what I really, truly, honestly do with my first time clients who have never fished on a fly before. So stay tuned and uh, I'll show you guys kind of what it is that we're looking at and uh, on this chilly winter day, catching some perch. As much as I said it's a low barrier to entry, there are a few things you definitely need before you can get out in the water and fish. First of that being a fly rod. It doesn't have to be an expensive fly rod. In fact, most of the you know the new anglers that I get, I actually point them towards like an Eagle Claw Featherlight, $25. Especially, you know, when they're young and they're gonna be hitting it on things on accident. You know, that's a fiberglass rod, really inexpensive. Just be prepared that, you know, just like anything else, you can break your gear. You'll need a reel. Now, unless you're fishing Tenkara, which is I would suggest for first-time anglers, but you're gonna need some form of reel. Inexpensive reels on ponds and lakes, you know, they do just just you know as well as some more expensive gear. So don't feel like you need to go spend a ton of money right off the bat. And also some form of line. Now, as you can see here, when you're fishing the pond, you're learning how to you know utilize different line mending techniques or, or line management. I would go with an inexpensive line, something like Superfly or even Cortland Streamline. Or, uh, or I can't remember what it's called, but Cortland has an inexpensive line as well. That's because expensive lines, just like inexpensive lines, can get roughed up on the ground. And when you're learning to manipulate line or you don't have a stripping basket, that can also be something that um, you want to take mind of. Now, one thing I definitely make sure that all my clients have is a pair of sunglasses. Polarized are better, however, just a pair of sunglasses because when you're casting a fly rod, especially with a breeze like there is today, you have to be careful of that let fly hitting you in the face. And so just please wear a pair of sunglasses um, or you know, even some big pair of like bifocals, whatever it may be, protect your eyes, please. Now, you definitely also will need some tippet. I'm not saying you need a lot of it, but you need at least one spool of tippet. Um, and you can typically get away with not using a leader in situations like this. But a tapered leader, they're inexpensive, three, four dollars, and a spool of tippet, this takes you a long way. Um, and we'll get into how to set that up here in a second. But some optional things here are, of course, a fly box. Inexpensive is fine. Foam, plastic, does not matter. Even an Altoids tin. Something to carry flies in. And then, of course, you're going to need some form of flies. Now, on a pond like this, you're, you're going to get away with fishing very inexpensive flies and you'll catch some fish, which is great. That's kind of why I want to get people out on a panfish pond. They're readily willing to take flies and not all that well tied sometimes. So if you're getting into tie flying at the same time or fly tying at the same time, that is also something that you can get away with making a few mistakes on the water and still catch some fish. And the last optional thing is a net. Is it necessity? No, but I find sometimes it's easier for for newer anglers to land fish when they're not accustomed to fighting fish on a fly rod to have a net. Now, depending on what you're chasing, your matching rod, reel, and line will be will vary depending on the number. I don't want you to worry about that right now. Catching panfish anywhere from a size three to a size six, you're going to be just fine. We're not looking to fight fish on a bent rod. We're not looking to power fish in. This is for a learning experience. And so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you a couple different ways we can catch fish in a pond. First one being with some form of streamer. Now my little pond here has mostly perch. So what we're going to be doing is perch are parsivorous, which means they, they hunt and eat fish. So I have a small, what's called a streamer. A streamer is a fish-like or bait fish imitation on a size three rod. I do have a sink tip on, but you don't need one. You can use a little bit of split shot. 
um, and we're going to be casting to where you typically find perch. So if you're accustomed to fishing for perch, then you know where to find fish already. And it's the same principle. But if you're not, then I'm gonna find some ambush points. It is very cold, so I'm looking a little deeper. Uh, it's about 30 degrees, which for this time of the year is not that cold. Or I'm sorry, but you know, for the late recent spell of cold weather, it's a little cold. And to double my chances, I'm also going to be tying on a nymph. A nymph is, is a, it can be tied to imitate a crustacean. It can also be tied to imitate um, a coronamid or insect. I'm gonna put that about 10 inches or so behind my streamer. And that's just to offer them a second option. And what's cool about fly fishing is you can usually do something like that where you can tandem rig different flies or different types of flies. And we'll see what we can do to get into some fish. But in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna cut over and show you kind of some very first initial casting tips to help you get yourself situated. Okay, so the first thing I want to focus on is your first few casts. Now, this can be very discouraging for some new anglers, so what I want to do is I want to focus on some basic steps. I want to think of it as a multi-step process. And if you need to go and practice your casting without a fly on on the water, I would suggest doing that. I do have a video, which I'll link below, on, your, on basic casts. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that you follow those steps in tandem with what we're doing here. So please go over and check that video out, but I'll show you first a few couple things here that uh, we're gonna be doing to follow a basic cast. So first thing, fly, li fly line is what's weighted, not the fly itself. So what we're gonna do is very in a very ugly fashion, we're gonna lay some line out, boom. Doesn't seem that hard, right? Now, every time I cast my fly, I'm gonna be actually be casting the line. So what I wanna do first is, as you see my fly sinking, I'm going to lift my rod tip a little bit to where it's mostly out of the water, the line itself. And then what I wanna think about doing is almost like picking it up off the water, okay? That wasn't very pretty, it didn't look like a fly cast, but we'll get there, okay? So again, our line's out. I wanna think about lifting most of it out of the water and flicking it behind me. Now, when we do that, I wanna focus on a few things first. I wanna focus on we want to avoid an arc like this. We don't want our fly rod to look like this, our shoulder making a rainbow. What we want to do instead is we want to think about once we get to about here, we want to deliver enough energy in our fly rod to bend the rod like this and have the fly line kind of pop out. So we're going to lift our fly rod and we're going to almost put, a, it's going to be up and then over, not up and around, but up and over towards your ear. So here we go. Our fly, our fly line's out. We're gonna go up and back. Okay. That backwards motion we're gonna replicate in a minute. But the first thing I want us to do is I want us to lift and deliver the line backwards. So here we go. All right, here we go. So we're gonna lift up and back. If you hear a snapping, something. You're, you're not doing it quite right. But what you have to focus on is this. As you lay it back, it's gonna form a nice tight loop. And if it doesn't, if it's wide, that means your arm is too arced. You need to have it up and directly towards your ear. It can be off to the side a little bit and that's okay, but it's gonna be up and back and let it fall. So practice that, that concept a couple times. It's gonna go up and back. Think of it as lifting the fly line up and then making it go straight behind you. Up and back. And once it lays out like that, we're gonna go into the next step. So our next step is once it's behind us. We're gonna employ the same motion but in reverse backwards. We're not gonna lift this time. We're just gonna go straight forward and it's gonna deliver our fly line. Again, don't think of it as coming up and over your head like you would with a spinning rod. You want it to come from straight behind you, straight forward. So right now we have the fly line on the ground and that's where it's anchored. So up, back, let it fall, and it comes straight forward. And that's a good basic way to start casting. Ideally, when we cast, we're gonna prevent it from hitting the ground, let it, the all the line go behind us, pull the rod with some tension, that's gonna load our rod, and then we're gonna deliver it forward. And you have to let it do that with some time. I would rather it be too slow than too fast, because if you go too fast, you're gonna snap your fly off because of you're gonna be transferring too much energy to the fly. So we're gonna try that again. Here we go. Back, forward. We're gonna go 
back, let it drop, and deliver it straight forward. It's gonna look ugly a few times. You're gonna have to play with where your personal rod angle has to be, but ideally, whenever we do this, it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna go up, back, like that. Up, back, like that. Not the prettiest with my kit right now because it's designed to have a little more line out, but that's our basic cast. Now, typically when you're fishing deeper water, now we have to let the, the fly sink. So I'm gonna cast out. Who says that fly fishing doesn't catch as many fish? Now, another big difference between fly fishing and spin fishing is how you retrieve your fly once you've cast out. Now, in spin fishing, you actually manually, or you automatically spin and it uses drag and it uses its mechanical mechanism to bring the fish in. Fly fishing, you have two methods to do so. So first one being First one being, once you hook a fish, or even before you hook a fish, use your non-casting hand to use implement a couple different movements. You can do slow subtle, you can do quick strips. You can use your rod tip if you need to a little bit, but we want to avoid that at first. Regardless, when I'm fishing like this, and I'm fishing for with a streamer, I want to keep my rod tip low. And I want to use my left hand to manipulate the fly line a little bit. You know, make little darting movements, creep it along, use a figure eight. Regardless, your left hand is going to be your best friend when it comes to manipulating the fly. Now, the other way to do so is if you hook a big fish, Now the other way to do so, if you hook a big fish, is to bring all of your fly line into your reel and fight the fish using your reel. The reel has a me mechanical drag, but everything is done manually. There's no free spooling or the drag taking while you, you know, manipulate the reel. So hypothetically, if you hook a big fish and it wants to run on you, you have to let it manually run and then slow it and reel in. So it's a very manual, hands-on way to, to address fighting big fish. That could be steelhead, salmon, that could be musky, it could be even large bass and things whenever you are fighting a smaller gear. It's a very, like I said, hands-on, one-on-one way to fight fish that allows you to feel the pull, palm it, make it, you know, slow the fish yourself. Um, provides a very unique challenge. So, I caught a fish or two here. Oh, there he goes, I just had another bite. Um, I caught a few, I caught. All right, so I caught a fish using the um, streamers manipulating here with my left hand. Now I'm gonna show you the other way we can do this, which is a little more traditional to old school spin fishing. Now another method of fishing subsurface flies in still water, especially on calm days, is the incorporation of a strike indicator. Also it could be known as a bobber long leaders and some uh, nymphs, chironomids, or what have you. Now this is a much more patient game. I like to typically use split shot as well, but today we're gonna show that you don't actually need that if you have a bobber at home, a small one. So I'm just gonna cast out, essentially. And I'm just gonna sit here with my floating fly line and I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for when I see my bobber, my indicator, do something on the water. It's bright pink, I can see it very easily. I'm gonna try and keep it, you know, there's not much oceans or water movement, so I'm gonna keep my fly line on the water as best I can. I'm gonna wait for something to potentially come by and to eat it. You could also use a dry fly as your indicator as well. It doesn't hurt sometimes to employ some movement, you know, as well in this case because when you're working with still water and you're working with perch they do like a moving living thing so a couple of rod twitches could be it could be a couple of little mini pulls on a taut line with your left hand or your non-casting hand just like usual 
I don't personally prefer the style of, of fishing because, quite honestly, I'm a very keep busy type of guy. And so when I do fish this method, I still end up trying to put a little movement in on the, uh, the flies as well. So we'll give this a little while longer. I'll add a little more weight, take a little weight off, so we'll see where we need to be. And if we're not going to get anything, I'll show you the third method of fishing still lakes and ponds for panfish as well, which in my opinion is one of the most fun. So now a third way you can catch fish in a pond is going top water. Now, it's cold, it's winter. I doubt I'm gonna get any top water rises on anything. So this is just for purposes to show you what I mean. But so far, every type of uh, hook set has been what's called a strip set. And I'll demonstrate that to you here in a second. This is the only method, in my opinion, that would probably warrant using an overhead hook set. But we're gonna cast this out like usual with no weight. This happens to be a little foam popper. I'm gonna keep my line close to the water and my rod tip close to the water. I'm gonna reduce all the, the slack line. I'm gonna give quick little popping bursts with this fly. Now again, I'm not expecting any top water hits because it is about 35 degrees. In New York, we've had frozen weather here and there. Now with bass, you might let it sit, it would perch here. I'm gonna wait till I get to about near the strike zone, which is usually this little shelf here because there's grasses that sit in here. Right, looks like I'm not gonna get any takes there. So here we have a three weight rod, 10 foot, with a three weight reel and four weight line. The reason I do that is because it's very easy for a beginner angler to feel the rod bend all the way down the blank, which is important when you're trying to figure out how the rod feels. So that being said, in that I have a 3x leader, 9 foot, with 4x tippet. That might mean nothing to you, that's okay. That's the strength of the tippet with its diameter as well for certain flies. I have a video as well, check out my channel, to show you exactly which lead lines, leaders, and everything you'd need for certain applications and how to decide that. All of these, for basic purposes, have been tied on with clinch knots. Again, check my channel for the video. But basically what this does is it allows us to get out in the water very basically to fish for a few fish. Find your local pond, get out, and enjoy fly fishing for yourself. To strip set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my non-casting hand near the rod, and then if I feel the tug of a fish, I'm gonna give it a big yank and that's going to hook the fish and you're going to fight it with your other hand. When you're fishing one of these poppers or any other dry fly, it's very advantageous to do an overhead hook set. So if you see the fish take, you wait for the pressure and then you lift kind of up a little bit. So we're going to spend a few more minutes here trying to cast out and see if we, what we can find, but I'm pretty satisfied with today's fish and with our instruction. Hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the other videos in the playlist. And until next time, guys, catch you guys on the flip side. Tight lines, and we're out.